all make mistakes, Mr. President. Mars attacks. Not anymore. We're going to take charge of this thing. Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John and today we're here to talk about the 1996 alien invasion movie, Mars Attacks. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of movie reviews, 4K Blu-ray reviews, and now we do podcasts, if you're into all that, nothing helps this channel out more than by you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and subscribing to us on podcast services. So Mars Attacks is the 1996 alien invasion film directed by Tim Burton and it has a stacked cast including Jack Nicholson, Jim Brown, Pam Greer, Sarah Jessica Parker, Pierce Bronson, Michael J. Fox, Glenn Close, Danny DeVito, and there is so much more in here I'm sure I missed a bunch. And this movie is actually a recommendation review from one of our subscribers. He reached out to me, I'm not going to give his name because I didn't ask, and he said that this is one of his favorite films and he asked me if I could review it. And I said absolutely no problem because I think Mars Attacks is actually one of the most underrated movies in Tim Burton's filmography and just in general. I think this is a great little fun movie. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. You know, this is the same year that Independence Day came out. Very similar plots, but Independence Day, yeah, it's fun, but it's supposed to be taken a little bit more seriously. Whereas this movie, it leans right into the fun. It's a comedy. You know, the drama is never supposed to be taken that seriously. And, you know, even with the special effects and the CGI, it all looks bad. And that's all intentional because this movie is supposed to be paying homage to the 1950s alien invasion movies and the 1970s disaster movies like The Towering Inferno. And I really do think that they nailed that combination perfect. They wrapped it in a nice 1990s bow with a great cast of 1990s these actors that we can all recognize and I think out on the other side of this came out a pretty damn good movie and a movie that I think you'll have a lot of fun watching and we're gonna be talking some spoilers in here so if you haven't seen Mars Attacks this is your chance to click away and come back after you have seen it so this movie is basically about Mars they we didn't know that they were there we didn't know that they had aliens and now they're coming to Earth and we're trying to figure out are they friendly aliens or are they angry aliens and this actually does dive into uh, American culture in a lot of ways because the president is seeking advice on what to do. Leader of the army who's like, hey, no, we gotta kill them. We gotta nuke them. They're gonna be coming here to attack. And then you got Martin Short there, the press secretary. He's like, ah, you know, you know, we can get this in front of the news. This is a big story. It's a big win for you. You're the guy who discovered that the aliens are coming. And you know, Jack Nicholson's like, yep, that's what we're gonna do. Because my uh, Jack Nicholson, not only does he play the president in this movie, but he also plays at another character in this movie with an accent that I think leaves a lot to be desired, but I'm glad he's having some fun. The people still wanna roll and boom. <laughs> Mr. L and he's a pretty damn good president, although very unbelievable. If Jack Nicholson was our president, I mean, I'd be having fun, but I don't know if America would be in the best of shape. So anyway, the aliens come, we're welcoming them in, they seem really cool, you know, they're like, hey, we come in peace. And fun fact for you, when they do the translation with the box, I am the Martian ambassador. That voice actor who does the Martian's regular voice that we can hear, you know, the one that we can understand, the English translation, that is the same guy who did the voice work for 1996's Scream. He's the voice of Ghostface. And actually, it's funny, he got that job because of his work on this movie. And the, both of these films came out in December of 1996. So I guess he was eating pretty good that Christmas. And these Martians, they're really just skinny, ugly creatures. They look just like Matt. They're gross, you know, they your, their brain is on the outside and they can barely speak. And you know, when they come out, like things look like they're going pretty good, but then they start killing people and then that's it, you know. And we get some, I, I do like these scenes when the Martians are attacking. And apparently they had a lot more of these scenes of them attacking different landmarks throughout the country but Warner Brothers wanted to keep actually around the world rather but Warner Brothers wanted to keep the budget under 60 million it ended up being 80 million so unfortunately in comparison to Independence Day Independence Day definitely nailed the let's destroy a bunch of landmarks vibe where this one the landmarks that they destroyed most of the landmarks are in Vegas which you know I'm a big Vegas guy so I, I love that this movie spent a lot of time in Vegas maybe that's another reason I really do enjoy this movie and as the Martians are attacking and throughout this entire film, we're spending our time with a lot of different characters, all in a bunch of different walks of life. And it all takes place in America. You know, I said we have Jack Nicholson's other character. We have Pierce Bronson, who is a, is a very smart guy. And he also helps out the president. He goes on the news. He has a lot of interactions with Sarah Jessica Parker. You know, this is that movie where Sarah Jessica Parker gets her head put on a dog and Pierce Bronson's head is just floating around in a, Mar in a Martian spaceship just off of Earth. So, you know, the some of these iconic images, I'm sure you've seen even if you haven't seen the movie. And again, this movie is just really funny. Every time we see the Martians, they're pretty funny. They're having a good time. Uh, that one point when they 
we were trying to nuke them and we just shoot it into the, the air and they intercept it and it's like balloon sucking thing they bring it in and one of the martians just sucks up the nuke bomb and like basically blows it out like he was just taking a big hit of a bong and i was like you know that's pretty funny like all the jokes in here are pretty funny jack nicholson is clearly all in he's having a great time now the only negative to this movie and i, I don't know if it's necessarily negative because it's paying homage to those 70s disaster movies and those 50s alien invasion movies which again you know this is 1996 two years after tim burton did ed wood so you could see like he's got that ed wood kind of feel in him he wanted to make a bad good movie so it's kind of hard to really knock this movie because i really do think that tim burton nailed the tone that he was really going for so but one thing is because there is this is such a big ensemble cast we don't get to spend that much time with people like we see danny devito very early in the movie then we see him again very close to the end of the movie and that's it same thing with just a a bunch of characters and don't get attached to anybody like michael j fox or anything like that because you know he's gonna die off pretty fast we get very limited amount of time with a lot of these actors jack nicholson definitely gets the most screen time and again that's because he gets to play two roles i guess the main hero of this movie that we're supposed to really get attached to are the one kid richie and jim brown's character who's just trying to get home to his family all the way back in washington dc and jim brown you know people always talk about those pro athletes or wrestlers turned actors we don't appreciate jim brown enough you know he's been in a lot of movies and he does a good job here but i'll always remember him from i'm gonna get you sucker he's perfect in that and you know usually i'm the kind of guy who knocks the cgi if i think it's bad and it hasn't held up but because the cgi in this movie you know doesn't look the greatest i think that really lends to the film it helps it age well which is very rare i don't say that at all i think that the cgi is a big part of what drags down the star wars prequels is that that cgi is just aged tremendously bad but this it aged bad, but that does help it. It's supposed to not look good. It's supposed to, you know, these are based on a Topps trading card series. You know, again, he's paying homage to Ed Wood and all those 50s, uh, 50s alien invasion movies. He doesn't want these to look good. It's not supposed to look good. That's intentional, and I love that aspect of it. Because, again, watching this in 2023 eyes, I still just really enjoyed it and seeing the CGI it never took me out of it. It actually helped add my enjoyment of this movie. So as you guys can probably tell, I'm a pretty big fan of Mars Attacks. I really just think that they're doing a tremendous job in this movie. They're just having a good time. Everyone seems like they're all in. You know, I'm sure that all these actors and actresses, they didn't have to spend that much time on set. I'm sure they worked out a schedule. Where they only had to work like two or three days, walk away with a nice paycheck. And I'm sure it was a lot of fun on set. Tim Burton's working with a lot of actors he worked with before. You know, even though this movie only made $100 million at the box office, and from what I was able to gather, it was about an $80 million budget, so it was probably a bomb. And I'm sure Independence Day coming out the same year being a very similar movie, and probably a better movie, which does hurt me to say because I do like Mars Attacks. You know, I'm sure that really just, you know, sucked the air out of this movie and anything it had going for it. But hey, you know what? Now we get to look back on it and hopefully this does find a new audience out there that people can check this one out. And actually, before we go, I want to talk a little bit about the Blu-ray I bought. So after I decided I was going to do this view review again for a subscriber recommendation review, I decided, you know what, let me check it out and see how much the Blu-ray is and I'll check it out on there. So this is a 2010 Blu-ray. I bought it off of Amazon. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was only like, it was pretty cheap, I think, like 11 bucks at the time when I bought it. I'm not too sure what it's going for now. Anyway, this Blu-ray, it's very very dated. It's a 13 year old Blu-ray. It's that classic Blu-ray where, you know, you just, you pop it open. It's the recyclable case. It's just one Blu-ray disc. It's a very bare bones package. You're really just in there just to watch the movie. It's, you know, this is the kind of movie that deserves a collector's edition. This is something that would fit in perfectly into the Shout Factory brand or the Scream Factory brand or even you know vinegar syndrome arrow video like a special edition of this is just right in line with what they're doing it's a you know it's a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously it's a sci-fi horror comedy in a way this is the kind of movie that would definitely fit with those boutique labels and unfortunately this is a warner brothers film so i do not see them ever releasing the rights to it i think that they would probably want to release their own 4K Blu-ray, and I don't see that coming this year for its 100th anniversary, and that's a shame, because this movie's Blu-ray is just, it's not good. It's its a—it's uh, definitely shown its age and its wear. It, you know, none of the blacks are deep. They're very much a dark gray and a noticeable dark gray. Like, they don't really get that close to black. You know, everything kind of has, like, a faded look to it. Some of the day scenes, when we don't see the sky, because when we have looks at the sky, you can see the streaks in the sky from the film itself. Again, this didn't bother me 
all those years ago, but now that I do this for a living essentially, and I watch all these different movies on the highest format possible, going back to an old Blu-ray like this, which I probably wouldn't have noticed all those years ago, it, it's just, it, it doesn't look good. And like, there's very little I could say looked good on the screen. Now, none of this has to do with the actual shooting of the film and the CGI itself. Like I said, all that I think enhances the film itself. It's the actual Blu-ray that needs some work visually in a bad way. And this is again where a boutique label would do some amazing work in cleaning this up because there is a good 4k with some hdr and dolby vision in this and another thing i think needs some work is that audio it's got a dts hd 5.1 but the mix on this is horrible i had to sit there the whole time with my remote in my hand to turn it up lower it turn it up again lower it because when the martians start attacking all of a sudden now my house is shaking and my wife's getting pissed at me wondering what the fuck i'm doing why is it so loud and i'm like it's not my fault they were just having a dialogue scene where they're just you know talking very low and it was fine and then all of a sudden the martians start attacking and now damn okay now it's just extremely loud unfortunately it's just not mixed correctly the dialogue is way too low compared to the action now when the action does kick in it does make pretty good use of your speakers and i'm like okay i just think they did a pretty damn bad job on the actual mix itself on the volumes. I think they have to go back and clean it up. But again, this all could be fixed with a brand new release and I'm not anticipating that coming very soon. So this is probably the best we're gonna have to deal with for now. And I'm still glad that I have it in my collection because again, this is a movie that I do revisit pretty often. It's the first time I've ever owned it. Every time I revisit it in the past, it's either been by rental or rental on Amazon or it's usually streaming. It's not a hard movie to find. So I'm glad that I finally do own it physically, but I would love an upgrade to this. That would be definitely ideal. But anyway, I can recommend this film any which way you choose to watch it. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm very curious to what you guys think about Mars Attacks. Are you guys a fan of it? Do you think that it was just, it just came and went and you were one and done? Or do you just think it's a bad movie? Let us know in the comments section below. It also happens to be Friday, guys, and that means it's time for our digital code giveaway. So we do this every single week here on the channel. Either Matt or I will ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions, and you will have your choice of any of the digital codes that you see on your screen before you today. If you are one of the lucky two winners that when we put your name on the wheel and we spin that bad boy and it lands on you, you'll have your choice of these codes. But to enter, you have to answer one of the next two giveaway questions I'm going to answer. You don't have to answer them both, but we won't stop you if you do. We just love interacting with you guys in the comments section. And, you know, we get some pretty good movie recommendations from you guys, so it's very much appreciated. So anyway, what are these two questions? Well, we're here today talking about Mars Attacks, and the director of that is one of my personal favorite directors of all time. This is the guy who gave me Batman, and that's special to me. So this guy, Tim Burton. What is your favorite Tim Burton movie? And then I figured, hey, this is an alien invasion movie. What is your favorite alien movie? Now, it doesn't have to be an alien invasion movie. It could just be like a movie that involves aliens. Maybe you're into Arrival. I think that movie is an absolute masterpiece. Maybe that's your favorite. I don't know. Whatever it is, let us know what your favorite Tim Burton movie is and or what your favorite alien movie is. And then you guys will come back to Monday's video, whatever it may be, and we'll put your names on this magic wheel, we'll spin that bad boy two times and maybe it'll be your lucky day. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for me here on another episode of Let's Talk. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this review. If anyone has any requests for reviews that they want us to do, if it's within our means and it works out and the price range and everything like that, I'll definitely grab the Blu-ray or Matt Will and we'll do a review for you guys. You know, these are good videos that we like to do one a week if we can. They're a lot of fun to do. And again, it's just sometimes we get a movie that we've never seen that we would love to check out or a movie that we love and we just wanna check out or maybe, you know what? hey, maybe it opens our eyes to a movie that we just blew off 10 years ago and decided, hey, now we're going to finally see it. And if you guys want to help the channel out, nothing helps this channel out more than by you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, telling your friends, and now that we're on podcast, subscribing to our podcast on whatever podcast service you choose to use, giving us a five-star rating because nothing but a five-star rating helps out a couple of five-star men like us. And that's really just the best way to support this channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. We hope you enjoy your weekend and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be seeing you around.